Welcome to a Legendarium special about Henry Bogu, the bloody werewolf hunter of Burgundy. In this episode, we will learn about a judge who, over the course of decades, sentenced hundreds of people to death for being werewolves, supposedly. Relatively little is known about Henry Bogu, who came into the world during the year 1550. He lived during a time of dramatic change, when the Protestant Reformation challenged the authority and power of the Catholic Church. Both churches hoped to show their power, and what better way to do that than by finding and destroying supernatural evils. We know that Bogu came from a family of some wealth, and he grew up as a devout Catholic. Bogu attended university and earned a law degree. Filled with the religious fervor of his age, he settled in Burgundy during the 1570s and in time became Grand Justice of the District of St. Claude. There he became obsessed with lurid accounts of witches' sabbaths, during which they supposedly had carnal relations with Satan. Bogu lived during a time when hysteria over witchcraft and werewolves raged across Europe. Any unexplained trouble from a crop failure to an unsolved murder could be blamed on witches or werewolves. Christians already regarded wolves as demonic, and as sheep farming grew in importance, predatory wolves grew more fearful, especially in the minds of the ruling class. Most cases of lycanthropy involved offenders supposedly leaving the church, taking magical tokens from Satan, and willingly devouring their fellow men. Bougo once said that he wished all witches could be united into a single body so they could be executed at once in a single fire. Many of those Bougo condemned went to the stake without the mercy of being strangled first. One victim, a woman, struggled so violently that she broke free of the fire three times and three times Bougo threw her back in until she burned alive. His youngest victim became Louise Maillat, who at the age of eight supposedly became possessed by eight demons. Bougo still burned young Luis alive, declaring that once Satan contaminated them, even a child could not be reformed. Other victims included people accused of various forms of black magic and sorcery. During the year 1598, Bougo wrote his name into the annals of history using the blood of his victims. That year, a wolf attacked a young boy named Benoist Bidel and his sister. Benoist, aged 15, climbed a tree to pick fruit and saw a wolf dart from some bushes and seize his sister. Leaping down to protect her, Benoist drew his knife, but the wolf drove the blade into Benoist's neck with a blow of its paw. A crowd, including Bougo, heard the commotion and wounded the wolf with a gun, which, of course, lopped away. But by that time, the girl had already died. The men returned Benoist to his father's cabin, where he died a few days later. Before his death, Benoist claimed that the wolf which attacked him had human hands covered with hair instead of paws. In time, the locals realized that a woman named Perinette Gandillon had a wound in the same place that the men injured the wolf. Bougo arrested Perinette and persuaded her to confess in his torture chamber. Soon after, she went to the stake and was burned alive. Yet when rumors started spreading that the whole Gandillon family practiced black magic, Bougo ordered each member of the family arrested. Facing the prospect of torture, Perinette's daughter Antoinette confessed to witchcraft. Under Bougo's friendly persuasion, she claimed that her brother Pierre and nephew George walked about on all fours, barked, howled, and even disappeared mysteriously from time to time. By the time Bougo finished persuading her, she claimed that she and both her kinsmen gained this power by having intimate relations with Satan. All three burned at the stake Bougo's solution for seemingly every problem. Bougo also prosecuted the case of Claudia Gaillard, the so-called werewolf of Burgundy. Claudia walked through the woods with Joan Perrin, grumbling about receiving so few alms while begging. When she darted into the bushes, a wolf suddenly emerged in her place. 
Joan dropped her alms, crossed herself, and fled the scene, later claiming that the wolf had toes like a human. When Claudia later told Joan that the wolf would not have harmed her, Joan told Bugo, and Bugo took this as proof that Claudia practiced lycanthropy and burned her at the stake. Supposedly, Bugo boasted of trying and executing 600 werewolves during his bloody career to preserve what he supposed to be his knowledge. Bugo wrote a legal guide on witchcraft called Discourse of Sorcerers, published in the year 1610. Bugo detailed the horrible doings of the witch's Sabbath, how sorcerers caused hail to fall on crops, and how a wizard could murder anyone with a mere breath. When brought before a judge, they could not be allowed to shed tears lest they use them to cast a spell. Bugo further advised offenders to be burned alive at the stake without sacrament so they would not only be killed but they would go to hell. This book went through 12 editions in 20 years and for a time rivaled Malleus Maleficarum in popularity. Bugo lived long enough to see some of these editions for he lived until the year 1619, dying at the age of 69, a long life by the standards of the time. This could not be said for his victims, who, if the legends are true, numbered in the hundreds. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.